about 100 yards from the entrance, upon a high level, was a singular shape. As we viewed it from all angles, we all agreed it plainly bore the shape of a sphinx. We later found more of these sphinx shapes, which we'll see later in the film. As we entered the open section, we soon found ourselves walking along very distinctive paths which communicated with one another just as our streets today. As we approached what appeared to be a dead end, we found it turned to the right and continued along until it met another street. There was distinct order here. These were clearly once streets. And along these streets, were the shapes of buildings. Even to our untrained eye, the evidence was undeniable. The ziggurat shape near the entrance was almost perfectly preserved. Our research had yielded the fascinating fact that substances burned with sulfur or brimstone had a remaining ash that was heavier than the initial unburned substance. That explained our question as to why the ash of these cities had been able to remain all these 3,900 years. The layering present in all the formations was another positive evidence that whatever these once were, they had been burned at temperatures exceeding four or five thousand degrees. This layering effect was the result of thermal ionization. Whenever a substance is burned at extremely high temperatures, the ions of the various substances being burned attract and repel, distorting the flame. Ron drew our attention to features present here which simply do not occur naturally. He showed us a section which revealed a broken double wall which extended toward us at a perfect 90 degree angle. Over the many years, the ash of these cities had eroded to such a degree that it caused the thick layer of loose ash, which made walking so difficult. This combined with the heat that was well over 100 degrees and the intense glare of the sun off of the whitish remains hampered our exploration somewhat. The cities were so large, we knew it would take weeks to complete our exploration of even this one. So we decided to move on to a different area. Right. Goodness. You know, I, had, I was just under the impression that it was just leveled when the fire came down, but I guess like with what happened to Lot's wife, she, she turned around, she was turned into a pillar that these were preserved. Right. Is that true? or uh, well, This uh, well, well. appears to be the situation, Brian. <clears throat> in Second Peter, the second chapter in the sixth verse, it says that these are an example. And in the Greek uh, terms there uh, say that it's a visible example of what God will do to the wicked oh. in the future. So these people suffered the vengeance of eternal fire. This is in Jude. And under normal circumstances, we could not expect structures that are recognizable today as buildings and temples and this sort of thing. But God has preserved them so that uh, it becomes obvious to those that are willing to see. Okay. You, you uh, need to tell us how he destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. It really was by fire, but she said thermal ionization. ionization. Thermal uh, ionization. That's like nuclear. Uh, it, it has to do with tremendous heat. Uh, and of course, uh, the modern method of producing this kind of heat is thermonuclear mm -hmm. uh, devices. But anyway, what we have found in uh, your audience can see in just a moment, Susan, is that there are millions of spheres mm -hmm. of sulfur uh, that are scattered all through these ashes, much like uh, pepper in gravy or something. It, it's just uh, in there 
like a rain would fall. I think uh, you Why might you grab be. one of those. Can you pick that up? I'll bring the plate over, I think. Uh, we yeah. put these on a wonderful china dish here. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Seems kind of strange. These uh, came in varying sized uh, spheres of sulfur. The fact that they assume a, a, a spherical shape shows that they came through the atmosphere. Now, uh, volcanoes produce some sulfur, but this is laid out in a strata never exceeds 30 percent purity. This stuff is 96 percent pure sulfur. The other ingredients are metals, which cause it to burn much hotter than just plain sulfur would burn. Each of these spheres are encapsulated with burnt sulfur, showing that all of them were on fire. This could have been accomplished by the friction, the heat of the friction as they entered and came through the atmosphere. What but would any, happen if we set a match to that? If you set a match to this, uh, this would burn and chase everybody out of here because mm -hmm. burning sulfur uh, is unparalleled for smelliness. Uh, also, it would disintegrate this plate and we'd have a China syndrome right here <laughs> on the stage it's because it would it's burn its hot. way through everything that you see here. Now, is uh, there, is there m much of this there in those sites? Oh. <coughs> millions it's and everywhere. millions of them. All right. Now, why don't we see some of that? He, we've got some footage that shows how God actually rained brimstone, which is what sulfur is. Is that right? That's what uh, Webster's Dictionaries and the Encyclopedia, when you look up brimstone, it says burning stone or sulfur. Mm. Okay. Burning stone. Coming your way. Is sulfur. Uh, that is in most of them. Now the ones that do not have sulfur in them, and this one we just took a bunch of sulfur out and put it in our specimen bag. But the ones that don't have sulfur have a very black center where they have, uh, where it's been very hot. So now we'll move in on this one where there is some sulfur still present. And back off just enough so you can see what we're up to here. And we'll go collect that sample in a bag. Before I started using this knife, it was very, very sharp. Here this is, and we have collected some more, and it smells and tastes like sulfur. Now the Bible tells us that it rained fire and brimstone upon the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah. Now what you see in front of you here is the results of large and small, well, varying sized uh, chunks of sulfur, burning sulfur that have hit. And what we find here is that God rained this burning sulfur down upon this city, and rain is a perfect description of it. It landed uh, just in the pattern that rain would fall, and the stuff of course, the accumulative heat of all of this upon the city set the entire thing ablaze. The uh, flashpoint of every material there, metal, stone, of course the people, and everything burned. And this sulfur continued to burn, and it vitrified the material around it after it had uh, burned it all up. Okay. Wow. Now, how much of this did you find around the area? This is just a short, a small piece of that tape, but how much did you find? Uh, we found at each of these five locations uh, just unlimited quantities of these spheres. Mm -hmm. uh, they're at all depths. Uh, these things uh, would penetrate uh, anything that they hit. They would penetrate stone, wood, even metal. 
Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, we have found vitrified gold out there that has been uh, vitrified and uh, like vaporized. Vaporized, exactly. Mm -hmm. We have found the crystals that uh, gold, when it is vaporized, turns into these salts. Mm -hmm. And we, of course, found those uh, with our electronic uh, systems. And so uh, we also found uh, parts of human skeletons that were mm -hmm. all burnt and gnarled. Uh, there is no doubt at all that these uh, are the remains of Sodom and Gomorrah and that they were burnt with tremendous heat. This, now this happened like 3,000, 4,000 years ago. It wasn't mm, something of that? That's happened. right. Uh, it was about the same distance before Christ back in the BC area uh, as we are on the uh, uh, after Christ uh, AD. Period. Why do you think other people had not noticed this, and and do people recognize your find as um, legitimate? Well, there are. Uh, you can tell them about. You know. Okay. Well, when Ron first, I, I was at home when he first uh, went over there and made kind of the announcement, kind of verbalized it. Uh, he called me up and he says, well, I think I found Sodom and Gomorrah. And my reaction was, sure. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> and he says, I've been driving past these sites 40 or 50 times because he has to go past them to go to another site he's working on. But the thing was <clears throat> is that he says, I don't know how I could convince anybody else of them because right now all they are is just shapes. And so oh, he came home and, and Greg Brewer, which, what we didn't show on there was a uh, film of a guy, Greg Brewer that went with us one time, he could just reach in there and grab this ash and go like this and it would just disintegrate like talcum powder. It is ash. Mm -hmm. So anyhow, he made arrangements to go back in October of, of 90, took Richard Reeves with him and we were praying for some sort of evidence that would prove that this was Sodom and Gomorrah. Well, the situation is that a tremendous amount of erosion has taken place and the sulfur capsules have been broken away and the sulfur balls are laying all around the ground and they're covered in ash so they just look like lumps. In 1990 when he went it had just rained and that is very unusual they get less than a quarter of an inch of rain a year. Hmm. The rain had called that, caused that big chunk that y'all saw laying on the ground to fall and inside this freshly fallen material, him and Richard came upon it, and there were all these reddish rings wow. with all the sulfur balls. Then they began to look around and, and note, then they knew what to look for. Now, if this is just ash mm -hmm. and can crumble in your hand like talcum powder, then why has not that rain or, or even the slightest amount of wind or anything just totally obliterated all of this? When I was studying all of this, I'm kind of devil's advocate with Ron. When he tells me something, um, I have to study it out. And so I began studying combustion. And um, the man, a Frenchman by the name of uh, Lavoisier, Lavoisier, I think that's his name, he began studying combustion. And he noticed that uh, substances that were burned with sulfur had a remaining ash that was heavier than the substance was before it was burned. And that's because uh, the, the chemical reaction draws in extra molecules from the oxygen. So God arranged to burn this with a substance that would leave an, a heavier ash than the original materials that were burned, which m makes it tremendously heavy. Mm -hmm. And it is crusty on the outside. Um, not all of it you can just reach right in there and grab it. Mm -hmm. On the outside, the weathering has caused it to become kind of crusty, but once you get past that, mm -hmm. it's compacted. Is it like petrification, or just more dense? Or? It's, it's very dense ash, very, very dense. It burns so quickly. When you burn a piece of wood, it just kind of, the ash kind of spreads out. Mm -hmm. This was burned so fast, it was burned in place before it had time to expand. And uh, that's why the everything just yeah, right. It's just instantaneously. Mm -hmm. How long do you think it took for him to, if he rained this down, how long did it take? Was this over days? Well, the, uh, the Bible uh, says that as in an instant, mm 